All right, these are all the parts that you need to build it. Um, they cost about $35 in total, assuming you can print your own case. Otherwise, have a friend print it for you. Um, let me move things out of the way, and we'll just go ahead and get started. All right. Now, I recommend that you start with the radio module itself. This is the DRA818V, um, just because this is the uh, most difficult thing to position, although it's not that hard. Um, this is not through hole, but it's very, it's pretty easy to solder uh, because it has castellated edges and really big pads. So it's almost as easy to solder as a through hole part. So don't let that stop you. Um, all of the really small um, onboard parts have already been pre-installed. So if you order one of these boards um, from JLC PCB or PCB Way, um, they will come with the with the smallest parts already installed. So um, we're only going to be installing three parts. Okay. I recommend you start with a little bit of uh, flux, but you know, you do you. I find it makes everything a little bit easier, so I'm just going to put a little bit. Right. Get things lined up. So if you've ever done a part like this that is surface mount, you just want to get a couple corners of it tacked down make your life easier and then do the rest. So I'm just getting this lined up here. And that looks about good to me. Let's get in here and tack those corners. Um, you know, I'm gonna turn on my fan, but I will uh, try to edit the video so it's not so loud for you. All right, there's one corner. That's the hardest one after that chip mostly wants to stay in place, but I like to do one on each side. There. You see how easy that is? I know it's not through hole, but it's pretty much the next easiest thing. So then just go around the edge and do all of the remaining uh, connections. The connections on this top edge, two of them actually ground to the top uh, metal cage. So uh, don't worry if it seems like they're shorting. They're supposed to short. I'll show you what I mean after I get these remaining ones done. All right. That chip is attached. Let me show you these edge ones. I don't know if you can quite make it out, but uh, the two or three on this side are shorted against the uh, metal can, which is correct. And then this one on the far right here is not. And that is also correct. So. You really can't mess that up because they, they designed these castellations so that it it connects where it's supposed to and it doesn't where it's not supposed to. So that's it. That chip is attached. That's the hardest one of the bunch. Um, we're going to do the microcontroller next. So this little one. All you do is align it with these holes here. This one is through hole. I'm going to push it right through. Flip this over and solder it in. Just go along these pins again. I like to use flux to make life a little bit easier. There we go. All right, let's get this soldered in. Same thing, I'm going to do one on each side just in case things decide to shift around on me. I want to have it affixed. Just always my preference. I have pretty shaky hands, so if I can do this, Good chance you can do this too. Okay, I'm just going to take a quick look at these solder joints. Take my glasses off so I can see what I'm doing. Make sure I didn't miss any. Oh, I did miss some. Let's see. Okay. Take another look. Okay, everybody's got a good little connection there. Wonderful. Okay. Now... We are going to add the SMA antenna connector, just this little one here. Goes through these holes in the upper right, and it's another through hole part. Um, what I like to do is to put something like a pair of pliers or snippers under this edge of the board just to help keep things level. Don't quite find the right spot so things are not rocking around. There we go. Okay. Let's get one side of this tack down. It's 
a little easy to get this connector crooked, so I don't like to do more than one edge, one side, sorry, without uh, double checking that it's flush and that it's not crooked at all. In this case, it looks like it's a little bit off to the side. You can see it's uh, it's going that way just a little bit, which is not a big deal. It's not going to hurt the functionality, but I want the antenna to be uh, perpendicular to the uh, phone when this thing is installed. So. Let's see how that is. That looks about right to me. That's more true. Oh, but now it's, <laughs> now the legs are sticking out. Let's do this one more time. Here we go. I'm gonna lay it flat. More important that the legs are all the way through than that it's fully perpendicular. Okay, there we go. The legs are through and it's pretty darn perpendicular. Now I can go ahead and attach the rest. All right, let's take a look. Everything looks good there. Very good. Okay, so that's it. We have the circuit board uh, all installed. Now, this is an important part. These legs from the microcontroller, from the ESP32, uh, need to be trimmed down as far as you can get them. Uh, otherwise, they're going to poke into the back of your phone and prevent you from plugging things in. So, trim them down as far as you can. And they like to go flying, so <laughs> I like to cover it with my hand while I do this, so it might not most be the most interesting thing to watch, but I want to show you the way I do it. So do you see how I snip that down all the way down to the solder, as far as you can get it? That'll give you the most flexibility when you're attaching it to your phone. If any of these legs are too long, it's going to want to poke the back of your phone, and it might not sit flat. So. All right, that looks pretty good here. Let me show you. So you see those are nice and short. Um, when we add the uh, sticky gel pad to the back in just a moment, that will give us plenty of clearance from the phone. So those won't even touch the phone. Okay, so now this is the entire module. This is complete. Uh, the next steps are kind of the fun part. So you take your 3D printed case. I did this one in two color uh, on the website kv4p.com uh, under quick start. I have instructions about how to do a two color. Well, I linked to someone else's YouTube video this is the first time I had ever done it, and I was really happy with how it came out. So have fun. Try some colors you like. I like this black and gray, but I think it looks it looks more professional when you do the two color. If you don't want to do the two color, just leave it, uh, you know, with an inset of the name, and that's fine too. Okay, so here's how it goes in the case. Just get the USB-C port in the bottom, and then just push it in. That's it. It just snaps in. There's two little clips on the sides here that hold it in place. And this is what the finished unit in its case looks like. Now, these two holes here, you may wonder what that's about. That's to hold the USB-C connector when you're not using it. See, it slides in there for easy holding. All we gotta do is add our antenna. I'm gonna use this uh, small one just because this is the nice pocket-sized one. Um, doesn't have great range, but works fine if you're talking to people that aren't too far away like if you're out hiking or something. Um, I do also use things like the uh, signal stick, you know, which is a full-size quarter wave antenna when I want to reach more distant things like a faraway repeater. Um, you use whatever SMA male antenna you'd like, but I'm gonna be using this one for this purpose. And then the last step in terms of building is to take the sticky gel pad strip that you cut off, remove one of the pieces of plastic and put it right here in the middle of your radio give it a good press now the really nice stuff you know a really nice thing about this uh stuff here is that it can be removed forever you just keep pulling it on pushing it off uh and it doesn't leave any residue on your phone or on your radio here um really great stuff uh you can attach it of course more permanently if you want with like a double-sided uh, 3m tape i i have done that before on a on a phone that i didn't care <laughs> so much about uh, and that worked great uh, but I really like this now. This, this is my, my new favorite way of attaching it. So uh, the way it attaches is, and this is how I recommend it, put in the uh, USB connector like this so that you have kind of a reference for how to position it. Take your phone, and let me pick the camera up just a little bit so you can see things better. And then put it into the USB-C port so you can kind of, again, get that position right. You don't want it too high or too low or the connection won't be good. 
USB-C connection. And then once it's lined up nice like this, just give it a good press against the phone. And that's it. It's attached. This is what, you know, if you have a small antenna like this, I'll just leave the antenna on, put this whole thing in my pocket, and my phone can be used as a HT radio anytime I want. Uh, when you're not using it, uh, you know, if you want to save power or whatever, just take out the plug, put it in the little holder, and this is what it looks like. Okay, next we're going to install the firmware onto the uh, ESP32, which is in the radio that we just built. I know it's not ideal to uh, record the computer screen like this, but I want to be able to show you how to plug things in. So you've got this on the back of your phone, or not on the back of your phone, doesn't really matter. Um, you're going to take any USB-C data cable, not just a charging cable, it's got to work with data, plug it into your computer or your laptop, and then plug it into the port on your radio. So it looks just like that. And then I'm just going to set it over here. I'm going to go to this kv4p.com website and go to the quick start guide, which you're probably already following if you got to this point and then click the red flash firmware button. It does it all via the web. It will pop up, and uh, I'm gonna move this over here to try to show you what's coming up here. It will pop up and it will ask you uh, which device. You wanna choose the one that says CP2102. That is the KV4P HT radio. Hit connect, and it will connect. And then it confirms that you wanna install the KV4P HT firmware. Click that, hit install, and it will just take hmm, about a minute. It says two minutes, but it's usually faster than that. Just make sure you leave the web page open and just hang out here until it's complete. These are the same steps you would follow in the future if you ever wanted to download new firmware. Um, you just come back to the website and click that button and it will always give you the, light, the latest. There we go, it says installation complete. So I can just close this out and now we have the firmware installed on our radio. Okay, to install the KV4P HT app on your Android phone, just follow this step here, install Android app on the quick start page on kv4p.com. Um, right now, the app is in closed beta, so you click this link and you can add yourself to the beta to get the app. It's not yet in the App Store. Um, when you're watching this video, it might already be in the App Store, in which case I will update this step on the website with probably a link and a QR code. So just follow whatever this app, uh, whatever this step says when you come here. Um, once you have the app installed, it will look like this. This is that same phone we were just using. And... You'll notice at first it will say the radio is not found. Is it plugged in? That's because I have not plugged in this little USB connector. So okay. Once you plug the uh, USB connector into the radio and your phone, um, you probably should start hearing audio right away because the squelch is off, um, and it will just start on. Um, some simplex frequency. Uh, you're probably gonna wanna turn the filters on. Um, in this case, I already have them on on this phone. You can see all three filters. I recommend you turn them on. Um, they should be on by default in a fresh install, but worth checking. Um, in settings, you wanna put your call sign. Uh, until you do that, you won't be able to use text chat because your call sign is what identifies you on the air when you're sending APRS text messages. Um, you might also wanna set up some of the accessibility settings if you need any of that. Um, I'm going to turn the squelch up slightly because I don't want to hear, there we go, I don't want to hear that static nonstop. Um, and the last thing I want to show you in actually using this is how to add a uh, memory. So we're going to add a memory for uh, a repeater here in my area. We'll just call it, um, let's see, what is it? what is it called? They call it TV Hill. TV Hill. And... You can put it in a memory group if you want, which I'll do just to show you what that's like. I'll put it in a uh, Durham group. You know, if you travel or whatnot, you can put things in different groups. Uh, yeah, that's the frequency I want to use. 
pick the offset and the tone and let's save that and now you can see the memory is there all I got to do is tap it to tune to that memory it shows in the on the top in large characters KV4P testing. KV4P testing. KV4P 